parking cooler here that is leaking. I was here the, a little while back and we found a leak. I think it was right up in here in this area. So we're gonna take this thing out. I've not seen too many of these, so I thought I'd show you guys what uh, is involved. It's kind of nice design the way they did it because you're gonna be able to pull it right out the back. We gotta pull some screws out from the front side. Compressor and stuff's down here. Screws here, three screws there. All right, there we go. Now we can get into it a little better, sorta. Still got the screws back in there, which we probably just go through the fan blade here because it might be a little easier. No left to right, no up and down. Definitely got front to back. So there is the screws right there. And you may have to take out the ones on the right hand side there. Yep. We're going to have to take out that whole panel there on the left. Now they're on screws. Let's take a look at the new one. Alright. Kind of like an unboxing video, huh? There we go. Yep. Comes with that panel right there. So, yep, we just unscrew that. And that's nice. Quality's job one. Sell it out, sell it out, baby, sell it out. Looks like she comes right out of there. So we just unhook a few things here. Nothing a five sixteenth won't fix. Over to here, from the brazen here, and there, and it should pull right out. We're going to add a sight glass and a new filter dryer there. We're going to put it in flare style so we don't have to fool with that as much anymore. This uh, charge is completely gone, hence the whole reason why I'm replacing the evaporator. So we don't have anything to recover. It's already gone. Now that they've brazed on that, may not be able to flare it very easily. We kind of goobered it up a little bit. May have to do a little modification to that. Purge all that out. This way there's nothing in here but good old clean nitrogen. What we were doing, nitrogen was coming in this side first. Obviously, we wanted to do the last one coming out last first, and then that one there. So you can tell that it's probably been brazed on before because you can see crap inside there, which that filter dryer has been replaced. So who knows? In case you think I got it overheated, I can put my hand on there so it's not that hot. Get on, get off. Looks like we might have to add a little piece there. Flush that all out with some water. Inside there. That makes me wonder. 
All right, let's bolt this into place. We uh, got the blade back into position, which kind of makes me wonder. We've got issues there. They did have it set out here a lot further before. I think it's going to be a little better there, so I'll have to check that and see how it does when we get done. Alright, so we got that replaced, and we got that one replaced. So we're good to go there on that. Gonna get our bulb hooked back up, get that dryer out of there, and then start evacuating. good enough for 410A, it's going to be four, fine for 404. Like I said, that piece that was in there before was a total wreck, so we're going to go ahead and brace that up there, and then this will just make it easier for maintenance later to change uh, the filter dryer and stuff. So we got everything oiled up, and we're ready to put this thing back together. The equalizer tube here is in a crappy spot. This is where they had it at before really shouldn't be there. I am on a flat spot on the copper, even though it looks like I'm really close to the brace joint, but I don't goober my stuff in there, so all the brace should be inside the joint. That's where the work's getting done. So we're going to do this one back up. really isn't nowhere else to put it out. You could put it a little further down, but it's not going to make that big of a difference. If you went back here, you'd be right by the distributor tubes or the distribution block, manifold, whatever you want to call it, so. Alright, so we've got our filter dryer in there. I do use PoE oil inside of my boiler. Just an old oiler for like motors and stuff with a PoE in it. Got our bulb mounted here. I think they had that up here before. I didn't want any of this rubbing, so kind of got that there. I'm going to tape this. Well, I ain't going to tape it to nothing, actually. Just going to keep it isolated because otherwise it goes to this, might be heat transfer, go to that, cold. So I'm just going to leave it isolated there. And other than that, we're going to finish pulling it back here on it. We're already at about 900 and something. And uh, we'll isolate it off at the receiver and see how she does here in just a little bit. Which is, try to stay under 500, but if you look at some charts, if you can stay under 1,000, after the blank off test, say you stop blank it off at 500 and it stays under 1,000, there's there's uh, tests out there that say that that's good and tight. So we'll, we'll see what we get here. And when I do my blank off test, I'm actually closing my receiver there. Partially closing my valve and we'll just see what happens. As you can see, we're starting to slow down quite a bit. I would say we're probably going to level off and quit somewhere around 13, 1400 area, maybe not even that high. But we're isolated completely from the pump, and if it was uh, a leak, it wouldn't slow down. It'd just keep on going at the same rate, non-stop. Moisture uh, or refrigerant is going to go so high and stop. So we gave up, went ahead and ran it a little longer. Now we're back to 345. Let's see what we end up getting. I'm going to crowd my receiver back off again because I don't trust this valve. And then slowly have to close that thing. And close it the rest of the way and see what happens. So you've got moisture trapped in here, but coming out, it's already dropped already down to 3 micron a second, but you can see your leak rate up in the top right corner. Alright, as you can see, we're down to 1.9, we're still in the 600s area. It's slowing down a lot faster than what it did the last time, so unfortunately, we're still going to have to go a little longer. If not, at some point, you got to balance time with uh, logic here, let the filter dryer do the rest. 
52 ounces. So 52 ounces is what it is. Yeah. yeah, see it's under pressure before it even says high pressure. So we're good there. 52 ounces is 3.25 pounds. 0.25 times 16 comes out to 4 ounces. So 5, 6, 7, we went over by 3 ounces, which I'm not worried about. Let's see where we're at. We got kind of lucky there. Sight glass is not quite green yet, but I can tell that it's slowly changing. There was quite a bit of oil down in that pipe down there, so I'm going to go ahead and isolate this and get that straighter core back in there and then we're going to run this thing. Okay. Looks like that one's it. And there it goes. So, we're looking pretty good. It's about 75, so now I'd say probably 70 degrees in here, so 80, 90, 95, so about 25 over in yet. The evaporator's running 25 degrees. We've got a nice little sight glass, it feels warm. It hasn't turned green yet, but it's getting there. And uh, looking pretty good so far. We've already gotten our trap here blown out when we first did all of our prep work, so that's finished. The presser looks pretty good. Let's go inside and see how the evaporator section looks. This worked out kind of nice. sure you subscribe and hit the like button don't forget to check us out on instagram and facebook and until next time guys we'll catch you on the next one